He is posing six pertinent questions to the BOG governor. He's joined us on the line. Honorable Member of Parliament, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you. Uh, good evening to you and to our cherished listeners. Good evening to you. Before I ask you to speak about this, your petition against the BOG balls, uh, let's talk briefly about the transfer of votes. The NDC, the, your party had insisted that you were going to send agents. The AC had said no, and this was after earlier agreeing to do so. Now there's a U10. What do you make of that? I think it is in the interest of uh, transparency that everybody is able to monitor the process. You know that the Electoral Commission needs to build confidence in the register that is going to be used for the election. And the only way that we can all be very confident in that register is if we are allowed to monitor the entire process. Um, the registration was relatively okay because we're allowed to monitor. But transfers are another way by which at the parliamentary level, some indirect form of gerrymandering can take place where candidates can move voters from nearby constituencies into a constituency that they are weak and show up their votes and win an election. And so at that level, we need to ensure that there is equally a level of transparency that enables the parliamentary aspirants to all have confidence in the register that is going to be the basis of election in the constituencies. So if the EC has uh, changed course, I think that it is in the right direction. And I just hope that going forward, they will work in this fashion that is uh, listening to the interested parties and then why they make sense uh, to concede and then let us move on. Very well. Let's talk now about your petition. Who have you addressed this petition to and what's your issue with the Bank of Ghana? Well, as you know, the 2023 uh, financial statement again reveals uh, 10 billion Ghana City loss occasioned by the Bank of Ghana. If you recall, the 2022 uh, statement, which was released in 2023, had revealed a 60 billion uh, loss. And then also we discovered that they had printed money and given to government and had written off some of the monies that government owed the central bank. This really has been the underlying cause of the inflation. So I just listened to your station where the central bank is asking us to clap for them because they brought inflation down from the 50s to the 20s. But they actually caused the inflation jumping to the 50s. So you can't cause a problem, attempt to solve it unsuccessfully, and then ask us to you know, uh, clap for you. Clearly, the central bank governor and his team there have been mismanaging the finances of this country, consistently running the central bank uh, to losses. And you can trace some of the losses to the grandiose projects that they are embarking on. If you recall, we marched the street protesting against the, the financing of the new central bank building, uh, something that was supposed to be about eight or something billion uh, sorry, eight or something million dollars, uh, jumped to over $222 million. And we are told that the price is still escalating. And so I've written to him asking him to update us on the latest uh, escalated price of the, the, the project. What is the price now? Again, we are told that uh, what used to be the site for um, the central bank uh, clinic uh, has been pulled down, and a new huge uh, edifice is being constructed as the residence of the central bank governor. We want to know the cost. The central bank is putting up all sorts of projects across the country in the northern region. I know of some in the I think western and central regions also. There should be some there uh, in Kumasi, I believe. So we want to know the cost of these uh, projects because if what we see in the terms of the construction of the head office building is anything to go by, then we can imagine what is happening across the country in terms of their projects. 
And these, I believe, are some of the real reasons why the bank is is is, is facing the challenges that that we see, and and they are incurring the losses that we are registering. We, if you recall, I also went to the Office of Special Prosecutor, uh, asked them to investigate the procurement process because it was obvious that some wrongdoing took place there. And up to now, we haven't heard from the Office of Special Prosecutor. I will continue to press on because we must hold the central bank governor and leadership accountable for what is happening to our economy. What is the arrangement with accommodating our central bank governor? Are you opposed to that? Is that, is that what your point is? We're asking for the cost. What is the cost of the project? What is the cost of the project? We want to see the cost of the project. If you are running at a loss, last year, in the last two years, you ran at a loss of uh, 60 billion. This year, you ran at a loss of 10 billion. Is the residence of the governor the most important thing in this country? Is that a priority? So we want to see the cost, and then we can take a decision on that. I'm not against the rest of the governor having a place of abode, but let's know what the cost is. What is your suspicion? Well, I mean, from what I see in terms of the construction of the head office building, again, I suspect that some, you know, unimaginable sums of money are being spent on that construction. And not just there. I mean, across the country, when Parliament resumes, I'm going to be asking questions on all the projects of the, the Bank of Ghana. I mean, those that I, I, I know of, uh, if, if you get to know the cost at which these projects are being undertaken, it, it will surprise you. And because they, they, they control uh, money supply and, and they have a way of you know, just paying for their contracts, unlike other projects where central government doesn't have money to pay, in their case, as you can see, their projects are going on unimpeded. And at the end of the year, they will tell us that they run at a loss. Uh, shouldn't we conclude that it is because of such reckless, you know, uh, frivolous spending that we are seeing the kind of losses that uh, they are registering? Could, could this not be a futuristic project so that the current BOG governor may most likely not be the one who would occupy this building if it eventually comes up? Do you not think that this is just trying to ensure that our state institution has the the proper edifice for whoever will be at the top in the future? There are two issues here. There's the question of priority, and then the second one is value for money. What is the cost of the project? What are we getting in return for that cost? If it is a futuristic project and we are buying it or constructing it at its actual value, then it reduces it to a question of priority. Indeed, is that your priority now? Why are you concerned about where tomorrow's central bank governor will sleep? Where were you sleeping, you yourself? And did where you were sleeping, you know, affect your capacity to function? I mean, we have countries where even prime ministers, you know, sleep in rented apartments, and yet they still function more efficiently around their countries better than what we see around ourselves here. So the question really is, is that a priority of a bank that is registering such colossal sums of uh, monies as losses? Is that a priority where you have mismanaged the finances of the country and you've had to even fix your base rate at 30%? So if your base rate is at 30%, can you imagine how much interest the, the, the other commercial banks that are using your base rate as a standard are going to be charging. I'm told that some banks are actually taking an interest of 50%. I mean, if you are running an economy, why would constructing an edifice for your own abode as governor be the priority? Now, you appear to be using two routes. You are going to have, when Parliament uh, resumes, a formal request to host the governor? Is that what you're going to do? And also doing an RTI? Explain to us the two routes you are using. For the right information, by law, we have a right to write and a request for information. You know, in the past, we've written and uh, he has refused to respond, or even when he has responded, 
They have provided, you know, information that has been inadequate, if you recall, that we even, we had to even organize a demonstration and march to to the bank. We're not allowed to present a petition to him because he refused to uh, own up so that we can uh, present the petition to him. Uh, and so that is one. And given his history of refusing to answer pertinent questions, even though I have written, uh, I, I, I don't know if he will provide the right answers. But then... Um, Parliament and the processes in the House also provide an opportunity to, to, to have questions asked through the sector minister that oversees the affairs of the central bank in the House. And Parliament, again, can invite the, the, the governor to come and then answer some questions. But then the problem with that kind of uh, process is that we get overly political and then one side uh, tries to block the effort to hold the, the, the heads of certain institutions accountable purely for political reasons, even though uh, it will be in the national interest to, to keep those institutions on their toes. But we will still explore that uh, avenue. And then when we have the information and we think that, you know, there is the likelihood that there's been some abuse of office, some malfeasance, some corruption, then we explore the route of you know, getting the anti-corruption institutions uh, to take action, such as what we did when we were not satisfied with all the explanations relating to how the prices of uh, goods and services under construction of the head office building you know, kept escalating. Uh, and so we went to the Office of Special Prosecutor. Unfortunately, I mean, they have failed us woefully. I haven't had anything being done there. They've, they came to me, took uh, my statements and et cetera, uh, more than seven, eight months now, and I since haven't heard from them. I mean, that's very uh, unfortunate that an institution that we all had so much hope in, in terms of uh, it being one of the, 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 the cornerstones of our anti-corruption fight, uh, such an institution will take up an important national matter like that uh, from a member of parliament and just go silent. So again, those institutions are failing us, but it won't stop us from continuing to to make efforts to hold our institutions accountable under the the the, the Nana Kufo Ado led government and uh, his vice president Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Let's talk about oversight. You do have oversight, uh, and you explain how you're going to do that. But there's also the Auditor General uh, who does a review every now and then, which report comes to you for action. Um, why wouldn't you wait for that to be done, an audit being done, which audit report to be brought to you by the dictates of the law? That would serve as enough basis for you to take any action if you so wish. Why are you trying to preempt that? Well, I mean, you, that will be after the fact, after the wastage has occurred, <laughs> after public funds have been squandered, then you will go chasing people to try and recover them. Why don't you stop it in the middle? and save the state some funds. I mean, we intercepted procurement letters that showed that uh, the, the central bank had written to the uh, National Procurement Authority requesting to construct a head office building somewhere close to 80-something million uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, no, 100 and, I think, $110 million. The PPA said, no, you should construct that building at a little over $80 million. Uh, and then later that building was uh, awarded on contract at about $120-something million. And then later we saw an escalation of the price, a variation to uh, $222 million. I mean, you want to wait until they have fully spent all that money and then you wait to hear from an auditor. When you could question the process now, uh, deal with the two issues. One, is it a priority? Two, is, should that really be the cost? Because if you try to convince the institution that it is not a priority, the size is not really necessary. Because one of the issues we had with the whole procurement was really the size. We wanted to find out from them, what is the justification for all that space? You don't need all that space. You have this old building, and they said, oh, because of, it was not uh, uh, well suited to resist earthquakes, and it's been here for decades. There's been one or two tremors across the southern sector. 
We haven't heard that anybody has died or been injured in the central bank building because of an earthquake or a tremor. Uh, we have the city house, which is additional space for the functioning of the central bank. We haven't heard that there isn't enough space there. And all of a sudden, in this difficult financial situation that the country is in, you want to spend $222 million to construct office. And we asked around, and most of the financial institutions that have new imposing edifices around there hardly spend more than $20 million on, on their office building. So that was what you know, uh, caught our attention. And we said, no, we need to find out exactly what is happening here. So the route of waiting for the Auditor General to now go and then audit institutions and then later you know, give reports that indicate that there's been some waste or because the Auditor General is just looking, not looking at the, the, the question of priority or the justification for the use of the funds. The Auditor General is looking at, was this budgeted for? Did you spend it? Is there a receipt? And et cetera. Not whether or not it is right for you to go and procure this size of space. Do you really need it? That is more of a political accountability issue. Okay. And a mere audit issue. I've heard that if he comes and he sees a well, uh, he says that a square meter is 1,200 and he acquired 1,000 square meters. So I multiply 1,200 by 1,000 square meters and then I assume that he has spent exactly that amount of money and these are the receipts and etc. He gives you a clean sheet that, well, you did well, nothing wrong happened. But for us, we were, we were, we were interested in the question of really. Is that what you ought to be doing with public funds? And is that a priority? But then again, do you have a justification for escalating the price from uh, eight or something million to about 100 million to 120 million to 222 million? Really, what was happening? And then did you go through the procurement processes? Is there a justification for that? Has any wrong been committed? And the social prosecutor's law says that if some wrong is committed in the procurement processes, they have jurisdiction to go into the matter and then to prosecute if uh, they establish some wrongdoing. And so we're going through those uh, uh, processes. Auditor General, yes, but I believe that if you can stop it, you stop it. You don't wait till an Auditor General goes after a year, after the fact, and then tries to figure out when people have ways and means of making sure that the, the books and the records look good when by the time the auditor comes. Very well. Thank you so much. So we'll wait to see if you are going to get a response uh, from this particular one. Uh, I'm sure you're hopeful that you will get that. He is supposed to respond. And, 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 and uh, I believe that as a minority, if he doesn't respond, we'll advise ourselves on the next course of action. Very well. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. That's Honorable Mahama Ayaga. He is the member of parliament for Bolga Boku Abege Parliament, Boku Central.